Hi friends, and uh, today we are going to discuss signing fee protocol and we will discuss only the basics details we will discuss in some other video. So specifically we will be discussing that why do we need it. So we will discuss uh, the justification to use signing fee protocol. For illustration, I have shown a computer network here. You can see there are multiple uh, users and there are two switches which are making a network. So in this case, for instance, take this is the sender or the source and this is the destination. So this user wants to send some data to this user and we will be discussing the layer two switches. So Hopefully we already know something about layer two switch uh, switching logic. So we have another video on that as well. So anyway, what happens? This user source wants to send some data to the destination. So this user generates a frame and then this frame is sent to the nearby switch which is directly connected. Now as per the switching logic, this switch has to look into its MAC table, media access control table, and in the MAC table, it has to find out the destination MAC address, which is found in the header part of this frame. So for example, this is the destination MAC address. So this switch will look for this destination MAC address, which is this. So switch found, yes, there is an entry and uh, for that we need to follow, our, uh, the switch needs to forward that packet through this F03 port. So the switch will forward that frame using that specific port. The next switch will also perform the same thing. It will look into its MAC table and find out the entry for the destination MAC address. It found the MAC uh, destination and found out the outgoing interface to be used to forward. So that is F02. This switch also forwards that frame to the ultimate destination by using the MAC address. So this in, in this situation, you can see by using MAC tables, the, the, the switches can forward the frame to the ultimate destination from the source. Now for instance, what happens if we take the same source, same node as a source, so this is the source. On the right hand side, this is the destination, same source and the same destination. Now, but now let us suppose that the destination node and the switch to which it is connected, that link has been broken down, that has a breakage. For example, someone has cut the cable between that node and the switch. So the switch doesn't have the entry. So this switch doesn't have the entry for this and this switch also doesn't have the entry for this. So what happens? This user wants to send. So this user generates the frame, forwards that frame to the switch. Now this switch has to look into its MAC table to find out the information that to which port uh, it switch, uh, this switch should forward it. So this is the MAC table, but you can see at the moment, for instance, there is no entry in the MAC table. Then if you remember, and, and specifically, such type of frames are called unicast frames because unicast frames are the frames whose destination MAC address is not in the MAC table. Okay, so these specific frames are called unicast frames. Anyway, so what happens? The switch doesn't find the switch hasn't find any any entry for the destination MAC address. So as per the uh, switching logic, this switch will forward the frames to all the connecting nodes except the one from which it receives. And this process, if you remember, is known as flooding. So by flooding, the switch has forwarded that frame to all of the connecting nodes. And now this next frame or next next switch this switch will also perform the same thing after looking in the mac table and it doesn't have any entry for that it will also flood the frame to all the nodes except the one from which it received okay so now what happens the frame comes to the third switch which is this one 
and this switch will also look into the MAC table in its MAC table and uh, suppose there is also no entry for that then what happens this switch will also broadcast the frame to all the nodes so this is what happens on this switch okay so now again we have uh, we, we have reached to this same initial switch but again this switch also still doesn't have any entry for the destination MAC address so this will again use the flooding technique to forward the frame to all the nodes what happens on this switch for example this again this switch what will happen no entry in the MAC table so this switch will, will forward that to all of the nodes again what happens on this for example the so same flooding will happen at this switch as well and in this way the same thing will repeat again and again because no switch knows about the ultimate destination which actually has been disconnected now this specific this specific problem is known as layer 2 looping and spanning tree protocol are there to help to solve such a problem of layer 2 looping so we, we just saw that how the loop to uh, layer 2 looping is going to occur and spanning tree protocol is a is a way is a rule which will save us from this such kind of problem the spanning tree protocol actually plays with the ports or the interfaces of the switch. These are the ports or the, or the interfaces of the switch. So how it will take the spanning tree protocol changes the port state either as blocking state or the forwarding state. It means this protocol will make, protocol will make these ports so in these ports to work into two states either blocking state or the forwarding state if the port is in blocking state then what happens a port in blocking state cannot forward a received data frame and a port in forwarding state can send and receive data frame so if you look at this if a port, a specific port is in blocking state, it means it cannot forward or receive. And if this is in forwarding state, then sure they can send and receive data from this. So just it will change the state of the specific port. So for example, again the same scenario. So by using the spanning tree protocol, it will it will change the state of some of the switch into blocking state for example this port of this switch is going to be changed or converted into the blocking state it means it cannot forward from this port so let's look at the again same situation that this source wants to send to this destination so source generates a frame frame is sent to this switch this switch will look into the MAC table no entry for the destination MAC address flooding okay and the next switch let's see about this switch so this switch again will look into the MAC table no entry flooding and let's come to this final switch what happens what do you suggest that's right this port is in the blocking state and this is the port from where the switch has received that so this is the only node which can be in to which that, that friend can be sent but this will not actually be broadcast this will receive and discard it okay so in this way by changing the state of some of the ports of the switches the spanning tree protocol helps us to avoid layer 2 looping and layer 2 looping is uh, problematic because it will introduce congestions in our problem in our in our network because all the media types used between the networks will be occupied by these frames. So this is the reason that we need spanning tree protocols in our network. So just we discussed the justification are the need for spanning tree protocol and we will look into the details on spanning tree protocol in some other video.